So the block we've got here is a 258 AMC out of a late 80s Jeep. The block has never been bored before and our customer brought it in for a complete rebuild and getting into it, the first two pistons both had broken rings. There's a lot of wear here. Uh, pretty good size ridge at the top of the cylinders on all of them. I'm kind of surprised the pistons actually came out pretty easily, but <laughs> I guess that's because the rings were broken on the front two here. Because sometimes when there's ridge, it's kind of hard to get the rings to pop out past the ridge there. Again, at the bottom of the cylinders, we are standard bore size still. There I've got about two thousandths wear from standard size. But when I get up to the top here, this one, we're right at about 29,000 square that direction. If we put it this direction, you know, we're 31 plus. So that means on that cylinder, we would have to go a minimum of 40,000 oversized to clean up and get straight and round again. This cylinder here is even worse. And when we measure it here, that is, if I get right under the ridge there, we've got 43,000 square basically and they don't make 50 thousandths oversized pistons. So to clean this one up, we'd have to go straight to 60 thousandths oversized, which is the max oversize that they make pistons on uh, for just stock replacement pistons for this engine. That all being said, the last four cylinders here, measuring them here, we've only got maybe 20 thousandths wear on the worst of them. So we could clean up these last four cylinders at 30 thousandths oversized. In automotive, we don't typically size one cylinder one size, another cylinder the other size. We order a set of pistons, they're all the same size. So you want to bore the block to be all of the same size also. Also comes into play with balancing and so on. So our options on one like this of either we can take all of the cylinders to 60 thousandths and a couple of things that that's going to do. That's going to make the, um, take it to the max bore size when they go to replace, you know, say another lifetime goes by and they're getting ready to rebuild this again in 20 years or whatever. They're not going to have the option of going another oversize. They're going to have to put in sleeves on all six or find a different block. It also thins out the cylinder walls, makes them less reliable, and kind of increases the possibility of, say, a pinhole where it's kind of rusted through the cylinder wall, and now we have, you know, a leaking cylinder, and that's obviously not ideal. Other thing is, when there's so much wear like this, to clean up at 60 thousandths, we're going to have to center up actually right underneath the ridge where that cylinder is worn the most to have the best chances of cleaning up the cylinder at that next oversize of 60 thousandths on this hole. What that's going to do is, if all of the wear is on one side of the cylinder or the other, when we center up, it's actually going to move the center of that bore location in that direction, which usually isn't a big deal. It's not usually enough to matter, but it is one of those things, especially with how much wear there is here, it's not super ideal. So if we take it to 40 thousandths, obviously that's maybe slightly better. Um, they might be able to get one more rebore out of this thing down the road. And again, it's thinning out the cylinder walls a little bit, but you know, it's really not too crazy. Or we could just put two sleeves in and we'll take all of it to 30 thousandths. That's gonna keep a reasonable amount of life in this block. If we're gonna put two sleeves in here, we can also center up at the bottom where there's not as much wear and get closer to the original center location of these two cylinders and get everything to clean up pretty well. So that's what we opted to go with with our customer. That was our recommendation and they agreed with us to go ahead and put two sleeves in and take all of them to 30 thousandths oversize, keep the cylinder walls as thick as we can reasonably, and um, you know maybe get another lifetime out of this thing down the road again. So that's what we're gonna go through in this process today. I took the mic, measured one of the sleeves. They're measuring right on the nominal size of 3.9405, right around in that ballpark. Sometimes they'll be a little egg-shaped or a little tapered, but when you start pounding them in or pressing them into the block, that usually kind of straightens themselves out to kind of conform um, as long as you know just want to make sure we have enough press here. We typically shoot for one to three thousandths press on a sleeve this size and we'll take the parent bore out in a rough cut to 3.920 which is a hundred seventy thousandths cut followed by a finish cut to 3.9375 which is about a seventeen thousandths cut which is going to leave us with about three thousandths press fit. Bringing it out in a rough cut followed by a finish cut helps us hit that number a little bit more accurately and with a nicer surface finish. And both cutters are set to the respective sizes and I always label them with a sharpie so that I don't accidentally put the wrong cutter in at the wrong step. So when I was talking about centering up our tooling, what we use is this the little finger that goes down up to a dial indicator so you can see as I push it back and forth, the indicator moves. 
and that just runs here in the cylinder. I've got it running. You can see that needle is barely moving at all, so we're centered up pretty well. We're also gonna measure the cylinder length and set the z-axis of the DRO to zero when the cutter is within a few thou of the top of the deck of the block. You wanna leave a 3 16 or quarter inch step at the bottom of the cylinder to press the sleeve against. With a six and an eighth cylinder, we're gonna be cutting to around five and 15 16 on the DRO. So we're going to start roughing out the first cylinder with the auto feed on the z-axis, being sure to stop the machine before we reach the desired depth so that we can run it down the rest of the way by hand. The machine does have a built-in automatic stop, but it's really not accurate and trustworthy enough when you're trying to do something like this. And here you can see the step at the bottom that again is roughly 3 16 of an inch. For the next step, we'll pop out the rough cutter and get the finish cutter installed to bring us to our finished parent bore size for that precise press fit we're looking for. I've got zero set right to the size of our sleeves. So now when we go over and measure the block, go right at the bottom, right at two and a half thousandths press at the bottom, come up here right around two and a half to three. If I check this direction, about the same way. On this job, I will be using our shop press to press the sleeves in, but while the block is still on the machine, we're going to go ahead and repeat the process on cylinder two here to get it ready for a sleeve as well. While the machine does its thing, my family and I wanted to give our subscribers a big thank you for watching. If you're interested in supporting a small family-owned business, consider taking a look at our website, jamzonline.com, the next time you're looking for engine parts. Before we press the sleeves in, I'm going to put one band of Loctite retaining compound around the bottom of the cylinder, and then on the sleeve itself, we'll put one band around the top. That'll just help if there was, for any reason, any pinholes through what we've bored here into the water jacket. It's going to help it seal. It doesn't really need it. Technically, the press fit should be enough to have it seal and everything, but it's just kind of an extra peace of mind kind of thing. And these sleeves are a little extra long, so I'm actually putting it down a little bit. I showed this already, but just double check. Now that it's cooled down, we're actually right at three, maybe just barely over 3,000s press fit. There were straight. And I could hammer them the rest of the way in, but I'm gonna move over to the press. Just makes it a little bit easier, a little more controlled and um, a little less likely to cause any damage. I like using the press when we can. If we're only doing one sleeve, it doesn't usually make sense to pull the block off because you have to refix it and everything, but here it makes sense. If you listen close, you can tell when the sleeve hits that step at the bottom, that's when we know when to stop. With the block fixture back on the machine, the first thing we're gonna do is set up a few cutters so that we can trim off the top of the sleeve because obviously they're a little bit too long, as well as set up a rough bore and a finished bore cutter. All right, so both of these two sleeves are meant to restore it to the factory standard size. So they're actually a little bit under the 3750 bore size that this originally was. So right now I'm gonna do a rough cut that's gonna take us to the factory standard size on these sleeves so that we don't have a huge cut to get us to the 30 thousandths oversize. So I'm gonna go through and bore it to that factory standard and then I'll come back and bore it with the um, 30 thousandths oversize finished cutter.
While I'm centered up here, I'm going to go ahead and bring it to our finished bore size. So our finished bore size for this block is going to be 3780, which is 30 thousandths over, over standard size. But we want to leave a little bit of room to hone out in the cylinder hone. So I'm going to leave close between three and five thousandths to hone out uh, on the cylinder hone. So I've set this a little bit under actually the finished bore size there so that we have room to hone. So. We're also going to take that sharp edge off and put a light chamfer at the top of the cylinder. We're going to repeat the process on the second sleeve, but I went ahead and chamfered it first just because I already had the tool there. Before moving on to the rest of the cylinders, I set up the bore gauge to the finished 30 thousandths oversize so we could double check, and the cutter was bringing us exactly where I like it with around 4 thousandths of material left to hone out in the cylinder hone to get us to that finished size for the minimum piston clearance. So on this next cylinder here, this is probably the third to the worst. These two are the worst, this one's worse. They kind of get better as you go back towards the back side of the motor. So on this one, I really only have about 8 thousandths until we're at the finish 30 thousandths oversize. So because of that, I'm gonna center up right underneath the ridge, right where the where is the worst, so that we can make sure that we're gonna clean up. Like I said earlier, that might technically shift the center line of the cylinder just slightly, but it's, it's very within reason. It's hardly anything at all. And it's better to clean up at 30 with the center slightly moved than to not be able to clean up and have to go 40 or 60 over. Looks like the worst one cleaned up, so we should be good from here on out because all the ones over here looked even better than this one. So we are gonna be able to clean this block up at 30. With all the cylinders warped, we're ready to move on to surfacing the deck surface of the block. And our machine works pretty well for this. We can simply change over to the surfacing head without even moving the block. I don't know why, but I always end up dropping the nuts for the spindle like three or four times. The last thing I surfaced on the machine was an aluminum head, so I had to switch out the PCD cutter for a CBN that's meant for cast iron. Shout out Michael Pro for the new T-handle Allens that I'm using on the tooling like this around the shop. Really appreciate the support from you guys. We just want to take enough off the deck to be flat again, especially after pressing in those two sleeves, so we're just going to touch off and take a couple thou to start. 
Our first cut there left a couple of untouched spots, so we went back for a second cut, which did end up cleaning up the deck. At this point, we're wrapped up with any of the machine work here on the boring and surfacing mill, so we're going to get ready to move into the Sun and CV616 cylinder hone to bring the bores to their finished size. Part of the engine kit that we sold our customer, we're going to be using a stock replacement sealed power cast piston. Before doing the final hone, it's always a good practice to measure all of the pistons as one last quality control check and also to be sure that we're sizing the cylinders for our desired piston to wall clearance. The honing process is really where everything that leads up to this point is going to come together. In a few different stages of different grit sizes, we're going to be honing out the last few thousands of material from the cylinders, with the goal of achieving cylinders that are straight, round, and accurately on size. Without a dwell feature on our machine, sometimes we have to finesse the stones a bit to take more material from, say, the top of the cylinders if we want to get them straight. Here we've got zero set on the bore gauge to the minimum recommended clearance from sealed power and my goal was to finish the cylinders in the range of minimum to minimum clearance plus a half thousand. It's obviously critical that we have no less than the minimum recommended clearance but we also don't want the cylinders to be excessively large when they leave our shop. So minimum to minimum plus a half thou has been a number that typically treats us well in these stock applications like this. But I'm sure each machinist out there probably has their own opinions on that. Either way, it's going to take a trained eye to be aware of the two sleeves in this block at this point, and it came out great. It's ready to move on to the final wash so that it can go back into the assembly area and get put back together so that our customer can get back on the road. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.